We've already taken a look at how to find reference angles uh, in radians when our denominator is one of the special denominators, whether that's a, a 3, a 4, or we've also seen that 6 is a special denominator. Uh, when we don't have that case, for example down here, uh, we'll need to do something a little bit different. It's not as easy as just saying the reference angle is 9 over pi. Uh, however, it's not too complicated. So here's uh, what I'm going to do. Basically what we're trying to do is, remember, get to the x-axis. Your reference angle is always the angle formed between uh, the x-axis and wherever our angle ends up. So 7 pi over 9 is going to be somewhere over here in quadrant 2. Uh, I know that because I remember that this over here is 1 pi, and if I make a full revolution around the circle, it's 2 pi. So really all I'm trying to do is get to 1 pi or 2 pi, or you can kind of think of these as what do you need to add to the fraction to sort of complete the fraction or make it a full whole number. So this is going to be my reference angle, that piece that's missing right there. Well, I already know that to get here, it took seven, nine, seven ninths to get there. If I want to complete that fraction or get to one full uh, integer value, one pi, I know that I need to add on two pi to that because seven pi over nine plus two pi over nine will get me to that um, one pi or that full uh, sort of half revolution to get to that full number, okay? So that's what I mean, we're sort of completing the fraction. I have a seven out of nine, so I'm missing two pieces out of that is kind of how I like to think of these, all right? So let's try a couple more to make sure we have that idea down. Uh, next up, I have negative four pi over seven. So seven is not one of my special angles. That negative sign just tells me to rotate clockwise instead of counterclockwise. So again, I, I know I'm gonna end up somewhere over here in quadrant three. Um, I'm a little bit past that halfway point, remember this would be 0.5 pi, or really negative 0.5 pi in this case. So again, I want to think about what do I need to do to complete that fraction to get to the x-axis, to get to either 1 pi or 2 pi. So uh, I again want to get to 1 pi. The negative doesn't really matter anymore, because all I need to know is my reference angle is always going to be something positive. Well, if I've done 4 sevenths to get here, that must mean there's another 3 sevenths uh, to get to the x-axis. So my reference angle this time is going to be 3 pi over 7 for this angle right here. Uh, not negative, my reference angle is always something positive. And again, think of it as completing the fraction. I have 4 out of 7 pieces, so I would need 3 out of 7 pieces to make that full fraction. Okay, uh, and then one more we'll take a look at, 9 pi over 5. This is almost um, a full revolution around the circle because it's almost equal to... 2 pi. If you divide that out and get a decimal, you'll see that uh, it's almost uh, 2 pi, or 2, if you divide this out without the pi in it. So this is where 2 pi would be. So again, I want to get to the x-axis the fastest way possible. This time, I want to try to get to 2 pi. 1 pi is way over here. So right now, I have 9 pi over 5. Uh, I want to end up at a full uh, 2, a full uh, integer value. So what I need to add on to this is just 1 pi over 5 as my reference angle. Because if we took 9 pi over 5 and added 1 pi over 5 to that, I would end up with 10 pi over 5, uh, which would of course just simplify down to 2. So again, you're kind of thinking of these as completing the fraction, whether you're trying to get to 1 pi or whether you're trying to get to 2 pi, but uh, that's how we'll find the reference angle when we don't have a special denominator.